Hey guys, welcome back to Get On Off Survival. My name is Chris. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. I really appreciate um, all the support I've gotten on this channel um, since I have been making these videos. Uh, the channel is just about five months old now, and I have gotten so much great feedback from you guys and great responses, great comments. Um, views have gone up, the channel's growing, and I can't tell you how excited I am about that. I've really enjoyed making this channel, and I've really enjoyed you guys watching these videos telling me you've seen them and giving me your your feedback and your suggestions on things that I could change or add or do differently. Um, today's video is kind of based off of that. This is the bug out bag that I've been building and showing you guys over the last few months. Um, you guys have given me some great suggestions on things that I could add to it, stuff that's worked for you and things that I might change on the bag to work better for me. So and I really appreciate that because um, in this field and with survival, it's one of those things you're always learning and you're always getting better at. So you guys giving me recommendations and ideas and things that you found that work is great for me because it makes my pack better and it makes my survival uh, prep better. So I just want to give you guys a, an updated video today on just a, a few of the things I've changed on the pack. There's, there's no um, huge changes. A lot of the stuff that I showed you guys last time is still there, but there are a few things that I have updated. Um, first thing is the, the hatchet over here on the side. Uh, a lot of you guys have kind of given me some, some feedback on that you weren't real crazy about the fiberglass handle hatchet that I had on there, that, that it was a little too weighty and that it wasn't really worth the weight it added to the pack. So I've had several suggestions. I've had Gransfurters, uh, Wetterlings, Fiskers, all of those thrown out at me as ideas for hatchets or axes that would better suit a survival pack. Um, what I ended up going out, going with on my pack right now is um, a Fiskers hatchet. Uh, I've actually had this particular hatchet for quite a long time. I've used it extensively, so it made sense to me um, when you guys uh, started making the, the comments on there and got me thinking about it, that it would be a better hatchet to switch out to. So, it's a little bit of a tight fit on the side of the bag. The, pro the real catch is this curve of the handle. It's great for the hand, but it makes it getting off this pack a little more difficult. So, this is what I switched over to. It is the Fiskars X7 hatchet. Um, like I said, I've had this one for a long time. You can see it's got a lot of a lot of wear on the outside of it. Pretty dirty from how much I've used it because it has been a great camp and uh, bonfire, all that kind of thing, hatchet. So I've had this one for a while. One thing I really like about Fiskars, they give you this hard plastic sheath. It's got a lock here in the back. This protects you when you're hiking, when you're traveling, whatever the situation may be. That keeps the axe head uh, covered and protected from any kind of slip or trip and, and you getting injured while out. Because in a survival situation, the last thing you need is an injury from one of your tools. This is the X7. This is one of the uh, a little bit older styles. They've switched over to an all black handle now for a lot of their newer stuff. But great cutting head. Um, and I'll tell you, one of the, a few of the big reasons I went with this, if you're in a survival situation, you want to minimize tool breakage and your tools being affected by the elements. So I went with this hatchet in particular because it is a fiber comp handle. There's no wood to rot. There's no um, pieces to get lost, nothing to come off here. This is just one solid piece for the handle. Then the head is over molded into the handle, cannot come out. And the fiber comp handle is, if you look on Fisker's website, listed as being harder than steel to break. So overstrike and the elements are not really, hopefully going to take a toll on your hatchet. Now, like with any tool, it can break, but you wanna give yourself the best odds and pick the best equipment that's gonna have the least chance of failing you in a survival situation. So the Fisker's hatchet is what I ended up going with. It's lighter than the uh, fiberglass handle hatchet I had on there, and it's built a little bit better. So it's gonna hold up better in the elements and better under stress of having to use it for processing firewood and um, 
setting up your camps and, and your survival sites while you're in the situation. Other, one of the other things I've added, um, it is not replacing the knife. The, the Smith & Wesson knife that I've had on there is still right there. But I've added another survival tool and it is by the brand Camillus. And this is the carnivore. Um, this is the, they make two models of this. They make an 18 inch and then this one, which is the uh, smaller version. Um, the 18 inch is pretty much a full blown machete. This is a uh, kind of a hybrid between a knife and a machete. And the reason I'm calling a survival tool is this really functions more so outside of what a survival knife does. Um, as you can see, it has the crisscross saw cut on the back of it. It has this, what looks like a gut hook right here, but um, Camillus labels it as being a wire cutter. You could use it for, cut, for cordage, uh, several uses, field dressing, if you need to um, use it as a gut hook. This has a lot of different purposes you could use it for. They have this here on the end that is not sharpened. Um, they list that as being something you can use as a shovel. Um, then of course it does have the knife blade and it is a very beefy, you know, good size camp tool. So you could definitely use this as a machete, as a chopper. Saw is gonna help you with, um, if you especially wanna process some, some stuff for a campfire or anything like that. It's got a hard plastic handle, finger grooves. It is full tang. Tang extends here out the back. And you can even use that as a, a little hammer or striking pommel here on the end of the blade. Um, this does come with an accessory knife and, and multi-tool right here on this pouch. Like I said, it is somewhat of a multi-tool. It's got some hex uh, wrenches on there, several different little features that you could use this for. Plus it is a, got a good size little knife on it. It has the accessory pouch right here that attaches to the um, sheath of the carnivore. Snaps on here at the bottom and then is velcroed on here at the top. One great thing about sliding this on the side of the pack is that I can lift this up, slide it through the webbing, and then snap it back down and it helps hold it on the pack to reduce it moving up and down. Um, this is a multi-purpose tool, so I am not replacing the knife with it. Um, this Smith & Wesson bayonet is um, just a suggestion for a fixed blade knife. Uh, this one worked well on this pack. I may change it out at any time. Um, it is patterned to be a bayonet, but it also doubles as a survival knife. You can definitely use in that scenario. One thing I like about the carnivore compared to it, the carnivore is capable of chopping tasks and being used as a machete. This knife does not really serve either of those purposes. So those are just things that I've added here on the outside of the pack uh, based on you guys' feedback. Like I said, you guys give me great ideas and keep me thinking about how to improve this pack. So those are things I added to the outside. Uh, my approach with a lot of this is to have equipment that's going to help me out in my environment. Uh, some other, other suggestions I've gotten are that the bag's not big enough, there's not enough stuff in it, and I understand that and completely respect that you guys might want to build a bigger bag. And I may in the future, um, I'm looking at some packs right now, I may in the future be going to a larger pack myself to be able to carry more gear. Um, having gear with you is going to be critical to keeping your mind set up and keeping yourself uh, motivated and dealing with your survival situation. You're already gonna be uh, stressed enough from being in a survival situation. So having gear with you that's going to make that a little bit easier is definitely going to help. Um, with that said, I like to keep the pack within a range that is not too heavy. Be, having to carry around a really large pack may fatigue you more in the long run if you're in a survival situation for a while and you're having to move around on difficult terrain. Again, you built the pack based on what fits you best and what you feel like will fit um, your scenario best. Whatever items you are looking to have in your pack, by all means. This is just a template, um, ideas of mine, as far as building a relatively lean, on-the-go pack so that you can carry it with you and you have the tools and the items that even if you don't have everything in the bag, you can live in the environment you're in and, and gather resources from where you are. So that's my approach to that. Um, one of the other things that I've added to it is 
I have added more of the emergency food ration bars by Ultimate Survival Technologies. These are great. They're 400 calories, a bar, and there are six bars in one of these. It has a five-year shelf life, and it does come in waterproof packaging. So in a survival situation, um, especially if you're not sure how readily available gathering or, or obtaining food is going to be while you're in that, having food with you is, is an absolute um, boost to you getting through this situation. Having calories and energy is going to help you do tasks and get things done to better your chances of getting out of the situation. Um, with, with a pack like that, 400 calories a bar, um, I would probably try to stretch that out between two and three days. Um, yes, you're going to be living on leaner calories, but you are at least going to be feeding your body um, each day with, rather than doing without all together. The life straws in there that I showed you, um, you're also going to want to probably have a canteen or something, uh, some kind of water pouch that you can take with you so that when you do find water, you can drink out of it with a straw and you can um, take water with you on the go. Uh, that's going to be um, very critical to your situation is to make sure you stay hydrated. Hydration is going to come before food, so water and, and having a reliable source of water is going to be key to you. Um, one final suggestion, I did get some great feedback from um, a Marine on my uh, on one of my videos, and he suggested getting a waterproof bag and putting the clothing items in it so that if you end up falling in water or something like that, your clothes stay dry, and the um, waterproof bags will hold air and help turn your bag into a bit of a flotation device. So great feedback from him. Thank you so much for your service, and I really appreciate the feedback. Uh, I love hearing from, from you military guys. My brother-in-law is in the Army right now. And uh, hearing back from you guys, from things that, that I know are tested and, and feel proven is excellent. Uh, I'm really happy to hear that and to uh, implement those things into the pack. So that's just a, a little update based on you guys' feedback. I also wanted to show you the new tool. Uh, like I said, love doing this channel. I'm loving the response I'm getting. You guys have been, have been so great, very friendly, very helpful. Um, with suggestions and comments, and uh, I love getting on and seeing uh, that I have new messages from you. That uh, That is really awesome with making this channel because I've enjoyed doing it. I have a lot more videos planned for the future. I've been super busy with work, so it has been hard to get away and do some of those. Um, as I said in one of my earlier videos, I'm going to be going to some of my wife's family uh, north of where I live, and they have some bigger uh, area of privately owned land that I can get out on and do some more camping and uh, overnighter and, and videos like that for you guys. So I really hope you're enjoying it. If you do, please hit that uh, subscribe button, like the video, comment, um, pass it on to your friends. If, if you know people that are into outdoor and survival stuff, uh, I hope you'll pass it along. I always love getting new viewers and new subscribers. Thank you guys again so much. Uh, like I said, this is Get Out Alive Survival. My name is Chris, and I will see you guys again very soon. Thanks again.